Howdy guys, so I don't really have a review video prepared for this week. I haven't really listened to anything new that kind of stood out or made me go, hmm, I need to touch that in a video. But instead, I thought it would be kind of fun to discuss an album that's about to come out soon. So for those who don't know, Dream Theater is basically one of the biggest bands that have defined just about everything about my life. I mean, it goes deeper than just being a musical influence for me. Dream Theater were the band that really sort of instilled in me a sense of discipline. And during some of my darker moments, I would dare say Dream Theater were a band that kept me going. They saved my life. And even though their output has been rather inconsistent over the years, I've always generally liked whatever they've put out. Yes, even the astonishing. That being said, I do have some hopes and fears for their new album that's coming out on February 22nd. Distance Over Time. It comes straight hot off the heels of... The Astonishing, which is this sprawling 34-track epic, although The Astonishing really kind of left me a little wanting. Too much emphasis on ballads, very stilted sort of flow. It always felt like there was a climax when there shouldn't have been a climax, and not really a lot of what I like about Dream Theater on that record. Not a lot of instrumental interplay. It, it did seem a little too much like the band trying to do something symphonic for symphonicity's sake. Is that even a word? Now, of course, this is also the band's fourth album with drummer Mike Mangini now. It's kind of hard to believe that the band has had Mike Mangini for as long as they did. It's, it's going on nine years now. And this is supposed to be the first album that Mangini actually gets lyric writing credit on, which... It's pretty cool. We haven't heard too much of that from him. Now, he has been involved with the songwriting in the past on their 2013 self-titled record, but of the albums that he has been involved with, that's the only one he's really had any real writing input into. Uh, a dramatic turn of events was composed before he joined the band, and The Astonishing was largely just a Jordan Rudis and John Petrucci writing session. So this is going to be the most involved he's been in the writing process. I'm hoping that this means that the drum sound will also be improved because I did find that on the three albums that have Mangini so far, the drum sound is a little lacking. It does sound a little robotic compared to the more loose, dynamic Mike Portnoy. The band has also said that stylistically this album is going to be a bit of a departure from the astonishing, focusing a little bit more on tight, aggressive songs, something that they've said about many albums in the past. Now, as of the recording of this video, the only real details on the album so far are rather scant. Uh, they mostly come from an interview John Petrucci did with the Rolling Stone magazine. And he does mention a couple of song titles and uh, a little bit of a sort of a very basic description of each track. He describes the song Fall Into the Light as being very Metallica influenced, featuring fast paced riffing, as well as a sort of western style cowboy section, as he calls it, which is a little more uplifting, melodic, and orchestral. He also goes into a description of both the musical and lyrical themes of a track called Barstool Warrior, which is a bit of an unorthodox title for Dream Theater, I think. Sounds a little Jethro Tull. But uh, he talks about how this track is going to be a little bit more influenced by the band's classic progressive influences, like Genesis, Pink Floyd, Yes, and there's a bit of a dichotomy between those two tracks that I think kind of has me a little bit more excited than I was for The Astonishing. He also mentions the grinding rhythms of the track Paralyzed, as well as the hotwire instrumental interplay of another track called At Wit's End. 
So that's four song titles so far. Uh, the band did release a short clip that displays one of the songs on the album. We're not sure which one yet, because it hasn't been given a title. But the sound is promising. It kind of reminds me a bit of uh, Systematic Chaos, in a way. So here we go, I'm talking about my hopes and fears for Distance Over Time. Now, I will be seeing Dream Theater live in Toronto on April 4th, and they will actually be performing uh, a lot of tracks from the new album, hopefully. Uh, but they've also stated that they'll be playing all of Metropolis Part 2 scenes from a memory, which... My body is prepared for that. Maybe. So I do have to wonder a little bit if maybe the musical themes of Distance Over Time will kind of gel with the musical themes of Scenes from a Memory. That would be kind of neat. So what am I hopeful for on this record? Well, I do hope for a bit more of a concise experience than The Astonishing, and that's something they've already confirmed. They've already said that this album's going to be a bit shorter. It's not going to be just three songs like say, something like Black Clouds and Silver Linings, where everything was over ten minutes long. It's gonna be something where they have many different songs, and they'll probably be pulling from many different influences. I hope that the drum sound on Distance Over Time will be better, because I wasn't really a big fan of the drum sound on the Mike Mangini album so far. There had been speculation that John Petrucci would be experimenting with eight-string guitars on this, as someone who is an eight-string guitarist himself, I welcome this development. Although I'd be more than interested in seeing how John Petrucci would incorporate them, because the way he incorporated the seven-string guitar at first was maybe not the most orthodox method. It wasn't like Korn or Meshuggah, who relied upon it. More or less, Dream Theater kind of uses the approach of, it's there when we need it. And also, does that mean an eight-string majesty is coming out? My fears for the record. I fear that it will be kind of a bit of a retread of some past material. The thing is, the band said that this is supposed to be more of a two Dream Theater's core sound kind of record. And I know that that's supposed to be sort of their little marketing ploy to kind of make it sound like, oh, this is going to be a great record, but let's not forget Dream Theater used this exact phrasing on several of their past records. They said the exact same thing about their self-titled record. They said the exact same thing about a dramatic turn of events. They said the same thing about systematic chaos. They said the same thing about Black Clouds and Silver Linings. They basically say that same thing about every album that isn't a dramatic e experimentation. So I, I don't know if uh, saying that it's going to be back to their core sound really gets me all that excited anymore. It's kind of something I expect the band to say, especially after an album like The Astonishing. I'm also a little fearful of James Labrie. Mostly just that... In his older age, his vocals are not going to be as strong as they used to be. And of course, this is something that's well documented. His vocals have not been the strongest, especially in the band's heavier, more metallic material. Uh, and it's actually one of the things I openly praise about The Astonishing, is that James Labrie's vocals seem to fit that style of music a lot better. When he's doing something a little more theatrical, when he's doing something that doesn't require so much of an aggressive tone. He excels in that regard. The metal stuff lately has been a little lacking, and I do worry a little bit that his approach on an album like Distance Over Time might not be up to snuff anymore. We'll have to see. And this isn't really about Distance Over Time, but more like the live performances that they're going to be doing. When the band did their live performances of Images and Words in their entirety uh, last year, the band tuned down to compensate for James's voice. I worry a little that they'll do the same for this album. Not that it's such a huge deal, but it does sound a little odd to hear everything in E-flat instead of E. And this isn't really a big fear as much as it's just sort of something I'd like to see on the album, but... I always like it when Dream Theater kind of does something 
at least once on an album that's a little bit more epic, a little bit more grandiose. It doesn't need to be a 30-minute epic like A Change of Seasons or Octavarium, but I'd at least like to see something pushing the 10-minute mark, maybe something in the vein of Scarred, or Lines in the Sand, or Trial of Tears, or Home. Just something in that sort of 10-minute mark with some really epic instrumental sections to it. Although it would be kind of interesting to see sort of a core sound Dream Theater album that doesn't have a track over 10 minutes long on it. I don't think they've ever actually done one like that. I'm gonna have to look that up. So the final verdict on Distance Over Time for me is that I don't really have high expectations. I got high hopes for this record, but my expectations are a little low after The Astonishing. But from what they've been describing of the album so far, it sounds like this is actually going to be a pretty big treat for the fans. Maybe something a little bit more like they keep saying for just about every album, to their core. And I think I can appreciate that aspect of it. Anyway, I'd be interested in hearing what you guys hope and fear for Distance Over Time in the comments below. And, uh, yeah, I've been picking up a few subscribers lately. I've got a few people that are regularly commenting on my stuff. That's great. I, I started this channel just for the fun of it. I never thought I'd actually have people subscribe. This is so weird. Well, thank you guys so much for watching my videos, subscribing, and... All that jazz. Take care, guys.